Yo, what's up guys? It's Overlord 469 and welcome to a new Ninjago video. Let's talk about Ninjago's first 10 years. So as you are all likely aware, 2021 leaks will be surfacing soon and I wanted to express what my ideal legacy waves would be throughout not just the winter wave, but a celebration through the whole year. In total honesty, I doubt we will get as many legacy sets because we are likely only getting a few alongside those of season 14 and 15 in the summer. I just thought it would be a cool idea to say how I would celebrate Ninjago's 10th anniversary through the legacy line. I am going to express Legacy as its own wave alongside the 6 sets or however many there are for each newer season. Also, I am going to be basing this list off a post I saw on Reddit back on April Fool's Day. Shout out to you slash Magical Muffin Druid. One more thing, none of this is confirmed. These are just ideas either from the internet or created by myself. Got it? Cool. Let's get started. First off, we have the Winter Wave releasing January 1st. Representing Day of the Departed, I would make something very small highlighting a fight between Cole and Yang. It would include a small build similar to Lloyd's journey with the Yinblade. It would be about 10 US dollars and include Ghost Cole and Yang. Representing Season 11, I think it would be cool to see a set highlighting Zane's nightmares. Therefore, I would make a dual set similar to the ones we have seen in the Star Wars line for about $20, including Zane and Asphira. Representing Season 12, I would like a minifigure scale Whack Rat quad bike for about $30, including Jay, Racer 7, and Richie. Representing Season 9, Nia's Battle Wagon would be nice. At $40 and around the size of the Ninja Nightcrawler, it would include Nia, Dareth, and Garmadon. Representing Season 4, I would make Chen's Steamboat in the $60 range to replicate at least some of its size. It would include a couple of minifigures, Kai, Skylar, Bilobo, Gravis, Klaus, and an Anachondra Cultist. Representing Season 2, as one of the most requested Ninjago sets I have seen in the community, we have the Overlord Dragon. I would make it around the scale of the Griefbringer set we got this year, and to complement this set, I would not retire the 2019 Golden Dragon for at least another year. It would be around $80, and the minifigures available would be Golden Ninja Lloyd, Kai, Corrupted J, Corrupted Zane, Corrupted Cole, and Corrupted Nia, perfectly replicating the end of Season 2. Holding off until January 14th, Ninjago's birthday, a standalone wave would release. Representing Season 3, another very requested set I have seen is Borg Tower. As a D2C at around $400 to replicate its ginormous size, it would include Kai, Jay, Zane, Cole, Nia, Lloyd, Wu, Garmadon, Cyrus Borg, two white ninjroids, and Pixel, as well as the four Technoblades. In April or May, we would get a CMF series. I will not go into detail, but the minifigures I would include are Blacksmith Kai, Showhost J, Rocky Dangerbuff, Digi Zane, Kimono Nia, Old Lloyd, Dr. Julian, Lou, Lily, Young Wu, Young Garmadon, Arcturus, Keiru Nagami, Milton Dyer, King Vangelis, Queen Vanya, Sorla, Kataru, Casual Vex, Grimfax, and Mistake. Up next, we have the Summer Wave releasing on June 1st. Representing Season 6, similar to what I made for Day of the Departed, I would make a location set with like a pillar or something highlighting the final fight. It would include Jay, Nia, or Delara with alternate face, and Nauticon. The set would retail for about $15. Representing Season 8, I would like a dual set like the one I described for Zane and Asphira. This one would highlight the fight between Lloyd and Harumi in the Oni Temple, be about $20, and include two minifigures, Lloyd and Casual Harumi, as well as the Oni Mask of Hatred. Representing Season 13, I would like a minifigure pack similar to the Gamer's Market including a small build for Adam and about two small ones to create the location of the Skull Keep. It would retail for $35 and would have seven minifigures. Cole, Corgran, Fungus, Plundar, Hailmar, a Winged Guard of Shintaro, and two Awakened Warriors. Representing Season 5, I would make a preeminent. In the $60 range, it would include a couple minifigures, Nia, Lloyd, Wu, Misako, and Moro. Representing Season 1, we all know there was a never-before-made Serpentine train. Let's make it happen. I would imagine it at the scale some of the LEGO City trains have been at. It would be around $100, and the minifigures it would come with are Cole, Young Green Ninja Lloyd, Wu, Hythor, and Two Constricti. Finally, near the end of the year, as of September or October D2C, we would get a bigger, more show-accurate Fire Temple. As some of you may know, there was a prototype version of this which was ultimately downgraded to look like the one we got in 2011. However, here, it would look more like the version seen in the show as most of the legacy sets have been doing. And it would even have a buildable flame to put inside it. It would be around 250 US dollars, and the minifigures available would be Kai, Jay, Zane, Cole, Nia, Wu, Samukai, Cruncha, Knuckle, Whiplash, Two Skulkin, and Garmadon. Also, all four golden weapons. What would your ideal 2021 legacy waves be like? Let me know in the comments. Here's the leak season starting soon. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I will see you in the next video. Peace!